Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days and if you've been here before, thank you for coming back. And if you're new here, take a look at the videos. Hopefully you like what you see. And I'm seeing some crazy lens flare here. <laughs> all right, well, I'm stacking a polarizing filter and a Tiffin Pro Mist one quarter filter. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm getting. We're filming, by the way, on the R5 with the 15 to 35 on there. But anyway, today's video is all about the 28 to 70 f2.8. This is gonna be an unboxing and first impressions video. I'm gonna go through a couple things that really stood out for me with this lens. But full disclaimer here, I bought this lens on Facebook Marketplace. And when you buy anything on Facebook Marketplace, you're not just gonna take the box and run. I had to open it up, make sure the lens works, make sure everything's in there. And uh, so I kind of already stuck it on my R5 and took a couple shots to make sure I wasn't getting a lemon. But with that being said, we're gonna do another unboxing here, a little more cerebral and uh, you know, a little more paste as opposed to like, you know. For now, let's unbox this. I'm so excited for this. I've been waiting for a good opportunity to buy this and buying it used, save a little bit of money because it's an expensive lens. So uh, let's get into the box. First thing we get, and this I didn't open while I was testing it, you get a little lens pouch, which is kind of cool. I wish Canon had a little like loop here so you could attach it to your belt and you could have the camera hanging on your side. That would be helpful. And then, lens hood and here we go <laughs> this is it and my big concern let's see this r5 just wants to focus on my face there we go look i'm so much better looking now aren't i <laughs> anyway so yeah this this lens okay so the first concern people have with this lens is weight and uh you can get a nice spiral with this anyway so yeah weight seems okay I don't feel like it's too heavy, but this is just the lens on its own. Let's compare it to this other super heavy lens. So here we have the 85 1.2 and the uh, 28 to 70. They're pretty close. I feel like the 28 to 70 is a little heavier, but let's weigh them right now. All right, so when you buy a new lens, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put a filter on the front, a clear filter, UV filter, haze filter, whatever the case may be, because I mean, that is a nice big element on there and that is easy to scratch. You bump it into something, knock it into something, something in your camera bag hits it and uh, yeah, you're in trouble. So in this case, I went with a B plus W filter. Um, this thing costs a heck of a lot of money. I don't understand why these filters, when they get a little bigger, cost so much more money. I mean, it's not like the glass costs a lot or the brass costs a lot. Anyway, that's me ranting. I'm gonna stop now. B plus W, this one is the uh, UV haze filter. Comes in a nice, feels like a real leather pouch, genuine leather pouch. And that's kind of cool, kind of old school. And let's get that on there. Okay, now. <laughs> I feel a lot better. Now, if I bump this lens or hit this lens or knock it into something, and I usually don't keep lens caps on my lenses. The other day, you know, I put up, uh, I picked up a lens to use it and I was like, oh my God, the lens is broken, it's all black. And then I was like flipping the camera on and off. I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with my camera? Is the LCD broken? And it was just the lens cap on the front of the lens. I honestly have not put a lens cap on my lens in years. I just use the filter, so. If anything hits them, it scratches the filter, you can replace the filter. Although with the price of this filter, maybe I will use a lens cap. But uh, yeah, this one's pretty nice. Uh, the, uh, the pattern on the outside of the filter kind of matches the control ring on the Canon L lenses or all Canon lenses. So that's, that's kind of cool as a design, like they complement each other. So uh, yeah. All right, and I also picked up these filters here for the 28 to 70 because of course I shoot YouTube videos and you can't shoot YouTube videos unless you have a variable ND filter, especially if you wanna shoot at F2 and what's the point of spending all the money on an F2 lens if you're not gonna shoot at F2. So what you need is some polarizers, some variable NDs, that kind of thing. So I picked up this uh, filter set from Nisi. I'm not gonna open this up in this video because I don't want this video to be too long, but I will make another video reviewing this product. And uh, I've never used this brand before, but I've seen a lot of positive reviews about them. And this kit comes with a variable ND filter, a one to five stop, and then it comes with a five stop ND filter and a one quarter 
uh, mist filter. So uh, those are perfect. Those are the filters I use regularly for my YouTube videos, but I don't have them in 95 millimeter. So now I have them. Uh, this will be linked down below. Also, when I review this video or review this product, I'll make a video and that'll be linked down below as well. So yeah, moving on. Okay, circling back to weight, because obviously this is a big question for this lens. Here we have the little uh, 50 mil macro EF lens on the, uh, the R. I'm gonna take that off. Great lens for B-roll, by the way. And we're gonna pop this on the camera and we're gonna see how this feels, how front heavy. Okay, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Definitely, if you're walking around, you wanna hold it by the lens, not by the camera. But, Okay, let's switch it up with the 85. I just wanna give you guys a proper understanding of how heavy the lens is. Yeah, it does feel heavier than the 85 in the hands, probably because it's longer and it just, it pulls on the wrist a little bit more, but it's not, actually the 85 feels kinda of light by comparison. <laughs> okay, so that's the 85. Now the 28 to 70. Okay, yeah, there's a noticeable weight because it's a little longer and it pulls down on the wrist. But if you hold the lens properly, not like this, but like this, it's okay. It's okay. So the technique with using these lenses, because I see a lot of people doing this and it drives me bonkers. It's okay if you're using a really light lens because you're just holding the camera and you're shooting, but when you're using a heavier lens, you can't really stop the shake. You lock your elbow into your rib. Let your left hand support the camera and then take your shots. But you know what? I don't think this is as crazy heavy as a lot of people say it is. I mean, it's obviously a big lens. It looks big, it feels heavy, it feels substantial, but it's not so heavy that it's gonna overpower you or make you feel like you're lugging around a brick. But we'll see. I'll have to take it on a, a wedding shoot and then uh, I'll let you know if my back is killing me at the end of the shoot and I'm like, you know what? This lens, I'm gonna have to sell it because it's too heavy and I'm never gonna use it. So, <laughs> or it'll be like, these pictures are absolutely amazing. I can't wait to shoot this lens again. So uh, I'll let you guys know what the verdict is after I've actually used it on a paid wedding shoot. And this wouldn't be a proper first impressions video if we didn't take a look at some photos and videos shot with this lens. So first things first, let's pop this lens onto the R5 and shoot some video. All right, so now we've got the 28 to 70 millimeter on here at F2 and obviously it's way too bright. So we are gonna add this ND filter by Nisi. And this has got that true color technology so it shouldn't shift uh, to green or blue or purple or any weird color, which is why I bought this filter set in the first place. I'm tired of dealing with weird color shifts. So here we go. Now we're filming with the 28 to 70 at F2, 50th of a second, ISO 200 with the uh, Nisi True Color ND filter on there, a variable ND filter on there. And we are filming in 4K fine, which is 8K down sample to 4K IPB. And uh, this is what it looks like. It looks pretty good, right? Should be a little sharper than what you were seeing from this lens. This lens is pretty sharp, but I have um, a Tiffin Pro Mist 1 8 filter on here to cut down the haze because I don't, I, or cut down the haze, cut down the sharpness, it adds a little bit of a glow because I find these lenses too sharp and I'm pretty sure when I look at this video on, uh, on my computer, it's gonna look too sharp. But the cool thing with this set with Nisi is that uh, it comes with, this is probably a little bit too strong. This is a one quarter haze filter and it just snaps on. All right, so now we have the, uh, the haze filter on here and you can see there's a little bit of glow happening from the window light here. If we get the little window a little more in the frame. Yeah, so that's, uh, that'll cut down the sharpness, pretty sure. And uh, I don't know, let's take that off because I'm sure you guys wanna see how sharp this lens actually is. There we go. So yeah, it looks pretty sharp. I think I could film YouTube videos with this. It does have focus breathing when you do focus. Here we are at 70 millimeter. Way too close, but yeah, there's this face in uh, in 70 millimeter. I will spare you that despair. We'll go back out to 28, and uh, yeah, there we go. Um, 
Let's pop this footage onto the computer and take a look. Okay, so I have the last clip loaded up here onto the computer and let's take a look at this on a 4K. Oh my God. What? Wow, okay, so first impressions like right off the bat, this thing is sharp, holy. Like this is, this reminds me a lot of the 85. Like this was the sharpest lens I've ever used on a camera ever. Like I've been a photographer for 18 years. I've used a lot of lenses, a lot of systems. And this 85 millimeter F1.2 is the sharpest lens I've ever used in my life. But I think this F2 lens, wow. <laughs> I can see that my eyebrows aren't even like, there's like little hairs all over the place. This is crazy. Wow, like I am, I'm really like, I, I'm, I'm speechless here. This thing is pretty smart. Okay, let's see here with the filter, the haze filter. Okay, you can see the haze filter or the, uh, the promist filter one quarter. You can see the halation here, but you can definitely see in the skin that the, the detail has been knocked down a little bit, which is good, especially if you're filming people with like wrinkles and stuff in their skin and you wanna hide the wrinkles or they don't wanna show their age or something like that. This actually works really nicely. Wow. And yeah, take the filter off again. Actually, I just wanna go right back to the beginning. Holy cow, like the detail and the denim on the jacket, you can see the threads. Okay, so sharpness test pass. That, uh, that is amazing. That is really, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna do a comparison between the 28 to 70 and uh, this lens, uh, the, the 85 1.2, and we're gonna see which one is actually sharper because they are clean. Wow, okay. All right, so next question is, can you vlog with it? And we are vlogging right now with the 28 to 70, and I can already feel my bicep kind of straining. This is heavy. I can't imagine you vlogging with this for long, but I mean, in a pinch, if you needed to do a little vlog segment with the 28 to 70, this is what it looks like. Now we're just using IBIS in camera. There is no digital stabilization, and of course, this lens doesn't have IS, so uh, we're walking around, and uh, this is what you will get in terms of the the shake. Now, if we did turn on the digital stabilization or digital movie IS or enhanced, it'll crop in a little bit more and uh, I'll do that right now so you guys can get a sense for what it'll look like. All right, so now we have digital movie IS and it's not so bad. The crop is pretty good. You can get the head and the shoulders in the frame and I'm holding this lens by <laughs> the very end of it. So uh, yeah, there we go. You can definitely vlog with it, although you can see my, uh, my hand is shaking right now from the weight. And uh, I don't know if that's translating into the footage, but <laughs> it's getting a little wobbly. Okay, and now this is Digital Movie IS Enhanced, so it's cropping in even more. Now it's just like a, a talking head bit, and I'm right in the sun. So let's change this ND filter here. So here we go. Um, this is the uh, Digital Movie Enhanced, and this is an absolutely ridiculous vlogging setup. I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> imagine carrying this around all day. Not fun. Okay, so now let's get outside and shoot some photos and we're gonna shoot photos at f2 because uh, Why would you buy a lens like this if you don't want to shoot at f2? But let's just go see what this lens can do take some photos. We'll be right back All right, and we're back temperature just above freezing today, but uh, hopefully we we'll get some good shots Let's take a look and see what this baby can do all right, so we braved the elements, we braved the cold, we got a couple of shots, and uh, we're gonna take a look at them right here. And just as I was setting up this setup here to end the YouTube video, the sun was uh, setting and shining in through the window, bouncing off my reflective mirror case and creating a nice light on my desk, so I couldn't resist. I had to take a couple shots of some uh, vintage lenses and things, so we got a couple extra bonus shots here to look at. So let's get started. And uh, first shot here, the obligatory shallow depth of field shot, mirror shot. So here we go, this is at 100% and that depth of field, okay, it's not as good as the 85 1.2, but F2 is pretty damn good. And if we zoom in to 300%, <laughs> the text on the lens is still, or the filter is still 
legible. And this is the uh, Nessie True Tone True Color Filter that uh, I'll be making a review about, and I use that in all the shots that you're gonna see right now. So let's move on to the next one. So here we go, just a little house shot. Not much to shoot on the street right now, so I was just shooting houses. This is without my preset. This is with the preset. Just bumped up the colors and adjusted the tones a little bit. I, have, I really love the, the Fuji film simulations, so I tried to make a preset that kind of mimicked the, the classic chrome, or I don't remember what it's called. I think it was classic chrome. But uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Everything is nice and sharp. So far, I'm liking it. And this is... Uh, this is zoomed here at 70 millimeters. This previous one was at 32 millimeters. So the zoom is okay, it's nothing fancy. I found that like at 28 millimeters, it wasn't quite wide enough. Here I did a little bokeh test. So this is 28 millimeters at F2. And this is 28 millimeters at F22. So you can see the difference in the bokeh. Again, it's not as nice as the 85 1.2 in terms of creaminess, but it's definitely nice enough to just blur out the background and isolate your subject matter. So here we are now at 70 millimeters, and this is F22, and 70 millimeters F2. And you can see obviously at 70 millimeters the compression is better and the bokeh is a lot creamier. So that's pretty good. I look forward to testing this out at 70 millimeters f2 versus 85 at 1.2 because that bokeh is looking good. It's looking real good. Okay, so here we are. This is 28 millimeters to shooting a house from across the street. And then here we are at 70 millimeters. But here's the interesting thing. So keep in mind, I'm across the street here. And here's at 70 millimeters. And if I zoom into 100%, I'm focused here on this window. You can see some good detail. You can see all the vases and things in the window. And if we zoom into 300%, you can, <laughs> like, wow. We're, we're looking at, look at the lines on this vase, on the stem of this vase. And you can see this vase and the lines and the patterns. And it looks like some kind of maybe some quartz crystal here, some, some more vases and stuff. And we can see all this detail at 300%. And that is nuts. Now, keep in mind, I'm shooting from across the street at this point and we're shooting at f2. f2, like this isn't an, even the sharpest this lens can get. We're at, yeah, f2, f2. ISO 200, 70 millimeter, wow. Like I'm blown away by the details that this lens can pick up. That is nuts, that is nuts. And here's another shot, this is at 4.5, and you can just see there's details everywhere. Like it's just, it, the resolution of this lens is nuts. It's just like, Everything is sharp everywhere. And I did notice here when I zoom into 100%, there is chromatic abrasion happening here on the sides. You can obviously fix that in Lightroom, but I just wanted to show you guys. There is a 28 millimeter. It looks pretty bad right there. So this lens isn't all amazing. Of course, corner sharpness, obviously with a zoom lens, you can't expect it to be too amazing. So this is a 28 millimeter. And I was also noticing, I'll. I'll pull up some pictures that we are getting some vignette at 2.8. Now I do have two filters stacked on the lens, that ND, variable ND filter and the B plus W uh, UV filter. So there we go, the brick shot. Everything looks nice. Everything's horizontal. I don't know what happened here. I don't know maybe the bricks aren't lined up or I wasn't lined up. They seem to be lined more or less lined up at the top. But it looks pretty good. And that's at 28 millimeter at 4.5. And this is 70 millimeter f 4.5. And next we got this, I saw this nice black door against the red brick wall and they had like black fixtures here on the outside, it looked pretty cool. And uh, oh my God, <laughs> this is a bathroom receptacle and it's outside, that's the, the wrong plug. But hey, you know what? If I ever need to charge up my laptop, I can bring an extension cord, <laughs> park in front of that house and charge up your gear. Oh my God, really, they have that outside. Okay, and uh, I thought this was a cool shot. I liked all the horizontal lines and the diagonal lines and the lines created by the, the table and then the bricks and then the door. There's all these lines happening. And I thought this was pretty cool. I had to resort to shooting some architectural stuff because there wasn't, uh, wasn't any kind of exciting uh, subject matter on the street. And then here again, lines. Looks pretty good. I like this. And if we zoom into 100%, like... Look at that detail on that wood. Like, you can see all the grains. And I'm standing on the sidewalk. It's, uh, 
I don't know, it's a good distance away from everything, but uh, just like the resolution of this lens is just like, wow. Wow, I am thoroughly impressed with this. Like I said, the only other lens I know of that's as sharp as this is the 85 1.2. I haven't tried the 50 1.2 yet, but I'll give that a go. But these lenses are really nice. And again, like 28 millimeters, okay, but I don't find it wide enough. It's all right. We got the sun here creating some haze and stuff in the shot, but yeah, I think it handled it okay. And then we found this, uh, it looks like a homemade sculpture on someone's front lawn, so I shot that. The light was coming in nicely. It looks pretty good. And this is at F2, and I don't know, I'm probably maybe two meters, two and a half meters, maybe probably two meters away, so that's what, five, six feet away maybe from this. And you can see the background is not quite as blurry as I would like it to be. Of course, it's not bad. It's still isolated from the background, but with, with bokeh, the closer you get to your subject matter and the more distance there is from your subject matter to the background, the blurrier things get. But overall, the sharpness looks great. And here, I just wanted to have a little juxtaposition between the straight lines from these wires and then the organic lines of the tree. And it's kind of like a contrast between urban and nature and then the lines cutting straight through the image, which is uh, kind of interesting. And then here, snow melting on the sidewalk details detail like it's just like look at the sidewalk up close like that that you can see all the little all the aggregate and the concrete that's that's awesome and here this was kind of cool it's just a shot of a really modern house and a really old house and it just a, it's a cool juxtaposition again between two things and uh yeah no problem you look at all the detail that's resolved there you can count all the bricks read the numbers wow this is, a, and this was shot at F5. I was hoping at F5 it would give a, more depth of field and more detail. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple more test shots and try the different uh, aperture ranges. This is F4.5. This church door. Lots of details here, wow. So with Canon, all your dynamic range is in the shadows, right? So I took this shot here and I wanted to expose for the sky because I wanted the sky to be uh, exposed properly. The sun was setting behind the trunk of the tree. So of course, exposed for the sky, put the tree into the shadows and then with the dynamic range of this R5, boom. <laughs> wow, right? You can bring it all back, no problem. Now, the, the R5 isn't even the camera with the best dynamic range out there, but if you know how to use a Canon camera properly, remember expose for the highlights, let, the, let everything else fall into the shadows, and then bring the shadows back in post. And I just wanted to test out this lens with the R5's dynamic range and wow, wow. But this is more on the R5 than it is about the lens, but you know, now I know if I shoot a wedding and you have the bride and the groom standing next to each other, the groom's obviously wearing a black tux, bride is usually in a white dress, exposed for the white dress, and then bring the groom back in post because he'll probably end up being a shadow like this tree. Okay, and now we move inside. There we go, shooting uh, the EOS R with the 15 to 35. Although, F2, this is, like this area looks focused. I know it was focused here on the numbers, but it looks like it's slightly off here. That's something to pay attention to. And also, the bokeh here, when I'm pretty close to an object, it just the way it gets blurry is not very pleasant. And where are we at? We're at F2 here. So this is the best it's going to get. And this was a pretty cool shot. I like the, using the, the shadows here. So we got a vertical shadow and a horizontal shadow to kind of frame the shot. And here, this is tack sharp. Okay, this one. The other one I must have focused and maybe moved or drifted or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah. That's looking good. And again, from a side angle, and the, the details are great. Here we're at 100%. Let's go to 300%. And look at all the dust. I think I have to change the filter in my HVAC unit. Way too much dust. And here's a similar frame shot with the 85. I figured, you know what, let's shoot some nice shots and maybe we'll use them for thumbnails in future videos. 
because I have to review the 85. I have to view the, review the 15 to 35. Lots of lens reviews coming up on this channel. And here with the, with the backlit, focus, focused on the Canon logo. This is also F2. And here the background blurs out nicely. So it's just, it's just the logo that's in, in, in focus. Everything else is into Boca land. And then, oh, this is kind of cool, right? So here's a Canon AE-1 program with the 85 f1.2 L, but released in 1980. And then here we have the new version side by side on EOS R. So it's, it's kind of cool to see these. This is actually like uh, the first generation and the third generation of this lens. And you know what? If Canon comes out with a fourth generation of this lens, it's going to be massive. You can see every generation, it just gets bigger. And then here we're at F2, and I tried to take a shot of like the one lens with the other lens behind it, or one camera system with the other camera system behind it, kind of like a dramatic movie poster. It's okay, background's a little too blurry and too busy. I mean, uh, and you lose the, lose the, the message there. Here's a little side-by-side -side shot, and oh my god, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> the 28 to 70 sees every little speck of dust. It's like a macro lens. It picks up so much detail that has to be cleaned. And this is cool. It's like a little film simulation here, so the colors are a little different. A little back-to-back. -back. You can see how much, how much bigger the new, new lens is. The RF version over the FD version. And final shots, we have all three 85 millimeters f1.2 lenses here. And if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of the 85 millimeter focal length. Each one of these lenses has its own unique characteristics and they're all slightly different and a lot of fun to use. My favorite one, my favorite one to use is the FD. This old, uh, this old 1980s release, I think it was like February, March 1980 it was released. And this lens here is just, it's so beautiful. If you have the chance to like pick one of these up, go for it. It is absolutely awesome. All right, so final thoughts on this lens. The weight is too bad. That's a little too wide. Let's get that a little closer. Okay, so yeah, it feels nice in the hands. On the camera, it's not too heavy. It definitely attracts attention when you're out and about shooting because it just it's so damn big, but uh, that's okay. The quality is absolutely fantastic. The resolution is incredible. I'm really kind of blown away by, by the, the sharpness and the resolution of the lens. I wasn't, well, I was expecting it because I did the research of the, on the lens, obviously, but to see it in person is a completely different thing. So I definitely like it. I had the choice between this and picking up a 24 to 70. I chose this one instead. I'll make another video talking about that. And also I will make a proper review video of this lens today. It was just kind of like an unboxing and first impressions. And definitely it's a good thing. Now I will mention this. I didn't test it, but I've seen other videos where they talk about it. If you decide to buy this lens and you're using it for video, the focus breathing is pretty distracting. So that's something to look into. I say this is a photography first lens. I wouldn't suggest it for video, but I will test it. I'll make some videos testing this to see what kind of videos it can produce. And uh, yeah, I'll bring those videos to this channel too. So if you're into learning more about this lens, definitely subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions for me and you want me to test anything with this lens, leave them down below in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, maybe even uh, make a video about it. So with that being said, this video is over. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I will see you guys in the next video, or maybe we will do a review of this lens or more tests or something. <laughs> All right, have a good one. See ya.